we'll be showcasing how to do Twitter sentiment analysis in Python. And two good things are going to, going to come along with it. One is this um, sentiment analysis is actually done real time on streaming uh, Twitter data, so live Twitter data. And I will be also using a trending topic, a topic which a lot of us are talking about, ChatGPT. And I'll see what the final dashboard looks like. If you look at this dashboard, let me use my pointer here. This is a geospatial dashboard showing how sentiments across the world for that topic looks like. And I'm pretty excited for a couple of these reasons. And most importantly, it's free. It's an open source package, right? So uh, there's no harm trying this out. So um, I'm eager to showcase how quickly I can get this thing running. I think I have roughly six steps to make this happen. And I'll go through these uh, steps one by one. Uh, and uh, you should be able to run this on your local machine. I'm using a Mac, so there's some nuances there. But I'll go through some of those nuances as we go through the showcase example. Let's get started. Step one, go to that URL. It's a long URL, pathway.com slash developers slash showcase slash Twitter. So uh, if you look at the description below, you should see the link to this URL. And I'll go straight to that uh, uh, that URL right now. So let me go there. And I should see, um, this, is, um, this is the website, Pathways website. So uh, I'm on pathway.com in the showcase section uh, but like i said i'll showcase i have that url on underneath inside my description they show you how this is set up what the underlying technologies are which is you know quite good to read but i'm eager to get started so i'll go straight to that place where you need to get started there's a link at the bottom here called the github link where you should be getting that github repository i have loaded that link already so it's in that pathways um, github repo inside the github repo you need to go into showcases and there's twitter and uh, that's how you can start running this but let me let me go through it slowly uh, one more time for you folks so go to that link uh, and inside the link like i mentioned you should see the link to the github repo um, and then you should do the next step which is natural for you to do which is either fork it or clone it but i did a clone and i linked to that github uh, repo link right so those are the three things you have to do to get started so this is just part of the getting started now the actual meat of how this runs so once you have the github repo cloned you want to get into your uh, terminal, uh, which is on Mac, for example. I use Mac. So let me showcase what the terminal looks like. You should see my terminal. So uh, show you where I downloaded it. I have a, a pathway folder, as you see here. And I have pathway examples right underneath it. <clears throat> so this is where I have uh, got my repository uh, cloned under. So let me look at this quickly. I have this, right? So I have uh, quite a bit of folders underneath it. What I'm interested in is the showcase folder. So I'll go to showcases, showcases. And inside that, I should see my Twitter showcase, right? So there I have a couple of these things set up. So a Docker Compose, so you can you can easily make an assumption <laughs> that it is Docker the team is using at Pathway. So I will be playing around with Docker. So the prerequisite obviously is to have Docker running, Docker running on your Mac, Docker desktop, which I already have. I'll walk you through that. But inside Docker Compose, let's see what else do we need to do. So I'll go to the steps again, switching back to my instructions. Step one, step two, Step three, I think I walked you through that, which is, you know, go to that link, get your GitHub uh, repository link, and then get clone. Next step would be to modify the settings.env file. So once you have that repo, let me go back to my repository, bring it back up here on, onto the screen. So settings.env file, so that should be under Docker Compose. So under Twitter, so let's see where we are again, PD, TPWD, Twitter, Go to Docker Compose, then you should see that settings.env file. And what do you need to do there? Most important thing is, uh, don't worry about all these details up here. 
but the pathway index URL. How do you get the pathway index URL? You go back to pathway.com um, and I like guess if you go to pathway.com, you should uh, go to the developer section on the top. Um, let's see if I can show this to you. So pathway, you see the pathway showcase, pathway developers. Um, click on that. And if you have um, somewhere here, yeah, um, go to, yeah, click on this developer section. You should see that link after you log in. I think they are, you should see this link here. Uh, this link at the uh, this is specifically specifically for you this hyperlink uh, you usually get this after you log in to pathway but uh, once you log in you should get this link right so this pathway I mean login meaning authenticated and, uh, they're using single sign on with Google or let me see yes yeah, sign out you can sign out and sign in right so once you're inside pathway you should see that link right and this link is what you copy and paste inside the terminal, I'm sorry, inside the uh, settings.env file, this link, the pathway package path. It's a, I believe it's a, um, it's, um, yeah, it's a Python package. So it's an open source package that just, uh, uh, you just have to download that. Uh, and then once you're, once you're done with the settings uh, file, let's see. Uh, what else do you have to do? Uh, okay, let's see what am I doing here just quickly. Okay. There we go. And uh, you get out of that environment. You have to uh, go back to, um, for Mac users specifically, you have to change something in the Docker Compose file. So let's go to the Docker Compose file. So I'm done with my settings. Like I, I'll just confirm that if I actually did save it. So I should have the, yep, I have the pathway index URL at the end, which is very unique to you. Um, and then I will uh, go here, try, try going into my, um, to my Docker file. So let's see where I'm, so I'm in the Docker Compose. I should be here in yeah, the uh, Docker Compose files, the YML files, the YAML files. So I will be using the Docker Compose stream given topic YML, right? So let me take a look at that, right? This one. So VI Docker Compose stream given topic YML. Inside that, because you're a Mac user, you have to have um, this platform set up. So I'll put that also into the description of the platform colon Linux forward slash x86 underscore 64. Uh, I, I don't think the documentation is up to date on Pathway site, but I, I believe they're going to make an update soon. But this is uh, kind of important before you can run this thing on a Mac environment. Uh, if you're in a normal Linux environment, I believe it works. If you need support, these guys are very, very, uh, very, uh, uh, you know, supportive on their Discord channels. If you hit on the Discord channel, they, they will give you solutions on how best to fix it in the event you have some environment related problems. But for me, for Mac, I had to change this. I had to put the platform, this thing, platform colon Linux slash x86 underscore x64. Like I said, I'll put that also in the description file as you go through this example. So this is uh, something you have to change. So that's step number two or step number five. Right, the Docker Compose. For last but not the least, you have to modify the Docker file for the streaming service. So let's go to the streaming service, which is the Twitter streaming service. Uh, let's, um, so let's go, let's look at, let's get this back into focus mode. PWD, Twitter, LS, you should find the services. Sorry about that, let me get this back here. Services, LS, yep, there you go. I'll then go into, tweets streamer and then here you should have the docker file right so let's see hmm. okay there we go and inside the docker file if you look carefully there are quite a bit of commands which you can ignore but the last command cmd and these uh, these uh, parameters have to be looked at carefully at the end you will see I already put in chat GPT as the keyword which you want to uh, monitor so that's the keyword which you want to monitor 
and that's the modification. You can change this to anything else, but ChatGPT is the text which we will be monitoring as part of that example. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, so I'm going to do this um, and get out of the uh, file. I think we are ready to go now. So let's go back to our Docker Compose folder. Let's see where I am. So I need to go back, go back, a couple more, I guess. Yeah, I think so. And then I have my Docker Compose. And um, then I have to run my docker compose command. <clears throat> so where do we get that? We can get that from our GitHub repository somewhere here. Uh, let me see, where is that command? Yep, docker compose minus F name of this and why I'm settings down. Uh, settings down minus V if you run this example. So it should be somewhere here in the top. Let me see where the command is. Yep, so it's settings. I think I already have that stored somewhere. Let me see if I can find my command. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have the command handy. It's a docker compose command. Oh, there you go. I do have it. Okay, so uh, pretty straightforward command. It's straight straight from the um, straight from uh, the GitHub uh, GitHub instructions. Uh, the command, the readme file they have. So it's a docker compose command. I'll copy this. Right. Um, and I'm using the YML file for uh, YML file for you know, the YAML file for the stream given topic, right? And I'm running it, uh, giving instructions, the environment instructions, settings at ENV, and making a build happen. So I'll copy this just so that I can also modify my document here. I'll put that here into my text Docker file command. I'll put that there. So that, uh, people can know which command I ran. I'll just use that Docker file, and we should be ready to go after that. Okay, so Docker compose file. Go back to my terminal, and let me run this right now. And and it should give me a good yep. Uh, the whole environment should start running. While this is running, I should also be able to see uh, my. Uh, dashboard, which is my Docker dashboard, it's created the pathway, pathway Twitter simple example has been created. The container has been created. It should uh, start up in a couple of minutes. So this is the uh, desktop I was referring to, the, the uh, Docker desktop for Mac. So you can see how uh, each of these environments are created. This comes up, I think comes in all automatically with the Docker tutorial, but this is the one we are focused on now to see how to uh, create a Twitter streaming app with Python. And uh, the end result is a sentiment analysis dashboard, which is pretty cool to see. Let me see if everything is, oh, let's see what's happening in the background here. Um, and while this is happening, let's see. Uh, so I see uh, a lot of these, I think they have done a very good job containerizing all these behind the scene, um, behind the scene, um, behind the scenes uh, architecture like Kafka. They have put that under uh, different containers, I believe. So it's much more easier for us to not worry about the underlying infrastructure because uh, it's, a like I pointed out, a simple Docker command line, which is compose a uh, docker compose line which has uh, triggered off all these uh, all these underlying uh, open source libraries and uh, infrastructure so i'm going to wait for a bit oh the uh, the port it looks like it's already servicing http requests so there's the web container must have started so let's see how it looks like now so i have uh, my terminal running i have my instructions in the bag and now i will start up uh, start up um, 
a browser session with a local host. I already have that handy. 7704, that's the instructions coming from the GitHub repository. Oh wait, there you go. Showcase has already started to run. Um, I'll see if I can uh, get this window squished a little bit, but you, you should see, let me see if I can resize this a little bit. So everything is in one window. Yeah, I think it should come up now, a little more resize here. Okay, got some some events running on my local host, right? Um, and um, yeah, so this is around ChatGPT. I don't see any bubbles yet, so I'll just zoom out a little bit. Maybe there's something I need to configure here. It, at least it's capturing, capturing, uh, that today is the 21st, yep, it's just now it's capturing some data. Oh, I see a, I see a green bubble. Yeah, there you go. There's some positive sentiments going on, if you can see that. Let me change the window size a little bit um, so I can do a 10 minute window. There you go. Uh, smaller window size, apparently. Okay, let me see if I can increase the window size just a little bit. Uh, 60, 120 minutes, it's 120 minute window size. I'll wait for it to refresh. Uh, not much streaming happening around ChatGPT at this time in the night, at least in the US. Uh, there's some some positive, and I get the green. This, um, let's see, let's see. I don't see any negative sentiments. What is what is the color code for negative sentiments? Mm, there you go. It should be pink. I don't see any pink sentiments. But you know, the thing is working. It looks like it's working. I have around 35, 39 tweets uh, analyzed in the last little bit, or 49 tweets analyzed now. Um, so they're still analyzing, collecting uh, more and more tweets around ChatGPT. But it'll be good to see um, kind of the mean sentiment score. So let's see, there's some of them are, okay, there we go. There's a negative sentiment here, but I'm trying to find out where that is on the map. Let's see, Scalzi in Ohio. Maybe maybe it's not hmm, not not negative enough to show us red. Maybe just enough. There's a high. Let me change. Let me play around with this a little bit. Influence. I can change. Oh, there we go. There we go. So I changed it to influence. And this person here, Stephen Magnus. Let me go. Let me go to this dude, Steve Magnus. Let's see what is he saying. Far too long. So that's a pin tweet. There you go. I'm ready for the next phase of Twitter where it just becomes an endless stream of tweet threads created by ChatGPT. <laughs> Interesting. So somehow negative sentiment, a high influence guy with 98,000 followers, Steve Magnus, is showing up in that showcase here. So obviously treated. Uh, a very good thing I see is the influence score is here. So it's calculated here. So you can do it by response or by influence. Amazingly done well with a simple showcase. So you should try it out. You should play around with this. I just had um, 144 tweets <laughs> collected in the last, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds, right? Uh, and it's still going on. It's just changed, right? 152 to, you know, uh, and you can do multiple window sizes. You, yeah, you can change the window size to 15 minutes. You can go change responses uh, and influence and try this out. And this is a lot of fun to play around, especially when, uh, if you are, you know, somebody who looks at trends, macro trends, a journalist, want to know how a specific topic is uh, trending uh, in different areas. For example, in Denmark, it's something is negative. Our uh, Danish people don't like chat. But it's generally, you know, a neutral and negative sentiments in most of the most of Europe for chat GPT and Germany has uh, green are uh, much more positive sentiments at least with the influencers in ChatGPT or influencers in Twitter around ChatGPT. So all good so far. Uh, you, sh you folks should try it out. I have put some links in the description. It took us, what, less than 10 minutes to run this. Super fast, easy to run, uh, very well done by Pathway. And uh, give those guys a shout out um, at Pathway and try this out and give them some feedback. Okay, take care, bye.